Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to be going up to 95, maybe even 100 duplicates. So this episode is going to be all about expansion. We're about having to expand our beds. We're definitely going to have to expand our oxygen supply. And while we're at it, I think it's time that we start taming some of these geysers. We'll probably start with this cool steam vent. We're also going to tame this cool steam vent here. We're also going to tame this natural gas geyser and start running natural gas generators. And the great thing about the natural gas generators, it's even going to kick out some polluted water in return. Step one, though, is clearing all these areas out. That's also the reason we're starting with this steam vent as well. We want all this slime. Right now, we're down to 15 tons. Not too big of a deal because each mushroom only takes 4 kilos per cycle, but we want to grab all this slime nonetheless. Speaking of food, we've slowly but steadily started transferring all of these planter pots over to clay. We still have some here and there, but we're trying to make sure that they grow up and give us the meal lice before we go ahead and deconstruct the planter box. Food's a little bit tighter than we'd like it. And we've also had to cull back a bunch of our planter boxes as well. Remember from last episode, we built a wall here to contain all this ice so when it finally melts, none of the water overflows into this area. Well, I specifically decided to build it out of tiles at first to be able to chill this whole area down, except I accidentally waited a bit too long. So yeah, mealwise will not grow anywhere near here. Duplicate number 82 comes to us with a gift. They have diver's lung. In all the dupes that we've hired, the diver's lung has probably been the rarest trait in the entire colony. They also have an iron gut, they're building impaired, and they enjoy jumping into suits. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to dupe number 82, Oxo. The next dupe's a decorating, ranching, suit wearing expert. They're also skilled in aesthetic design, which really goes well with the creativity. They don't like to do any attacking errands, but this dupe is a little special. You see, this dupe has no name. That's because I ran out of names, which means if you want to be dupe number 83, or 84, or 85, just go ahead and put that in the comments below. So for now, Welcome to dupe number 83, 83. The next dupe is another unique one. It's the first duplicate in the colony that is flatulent. They're also decent at gourmet, enjoy decorating, tidying, and supplying, but nevertheless, we're gonna have to start dealing with the flatulent dupes. My other choices in the pod that 84 came through had bottomless stomach. No thank you. Especially not with our current food problems. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the colony, 84. Oh, look at this. Yay! At sweet long last, we have found another cool salt slush geyser. This brings our grand total up to one cool salt slush geyser, a salt water geyser, a water geyser, a regular steam vent, and two cool steam vents. Now, whether or not all those equal 20 kilos per second is anybody's guess. Now, we're going to do something a bit stupid, and we're going to break into this cool steam vent area while it's dormant. If it ends up being not so dormant, we'll go ahead and hurry up and seal this up and then start adding some suits. That way we can work in here in peace. Here's kind of a basic look while the dupes are still putting in a bunch of temperature shift plates. We're gonna seal this whole thing up with a nice crude oil liquid lock, doing the same sort of thing as before, dropping a little bit of oil, destroying this tile, and then locking it in place. Once we do that, we can vacuum this whole area out, and then once that's complete, it'll just be a matter of a steam turbine thermo aqua tuner solution. And so far, this cool steam vent is still dormant. Here comes Beer Killer. He's gonna drop off just a smidge of oil, and that should be just about enough right there. Then we'll uncheck the oil, build this tile here, and then remove this tile right here. It is important to note, though, that you have to build this tile first before you can destroy this tile. Otherwise, there'll be a little bit of atmosphere stuck in the middle of the liquid lock. Now that that tile is built, we can deconstruct this one. And once again, we have a perfect liquid lock. Right now, we have a perfect vacuum, but I'm not ready to deconstruct this gas pump. Now, while the dupes are not breathing, they normally don't exhale carbon dioxide. Just in case they come in here exhaling, we're not going to worry about it quite yet. Now, we're having to add another electric grill. We finally reached that time. We're starting to get a bunch of unpermitted foods and starvation warnings. That's not normally a good sign. So hopefully the addition of a third grill will help fend off the, you know, the massive death wave. Now, this is definitely an ad hoc setup because I don't like this grill not having a light or anything like that. But for right now, it's going to have to do until we can build a proper massive kitchen. Our next dupe's a cooking doctor researcher with quick learning and iron gut. 
Our only negative is that they're a kitchen menace, which is a win-win in my book. And we actually had someone else request to be in the colony in the middle of recording sessions of this episode. Welcome to dupe number 85, Dave H. And we're back to the no-name dupes. This one's pretty simple. They like ranching and researching, they have mole hands, and they have an itty-bitty little kitty bladder. Welcome to the colony, duplicate number 86. And just when things couldn't get any worse, we were presented with three dupes that had bottomless stomach. This one just so happens to really, really enjoy supplying and is a little bit of a night owl. Welcome to the colony, dupe 87. Remember the time I thought three electric girls was going to be enough? Well, apparently it's not. We're sitting at over 200,000 calories. And yet, we're still getting a bunch of unpermitted food messages. And that's because the cooks can't cook it fast enough. I'm finally starting to feel better about the food, thanks to our little friend, the sleet wheat grain. Some of these piles have been sitting here all game. For instance, there's 54 right here, 54 here, and here. It only takes three sleet wheat grains to make an entire frost bun. So with the help of the sleet wheat, we finally have the surplus we need to get over the hump before the paku kick in. Unfortunately, the cooks just couldn't keep up, so we added a fourth electric grill. And you know what? I think we can squeeze in a couple of light bulbs right here. Perfect. With as many dupes as we have in the colony, we really need to hurry up and finish this. All we're waiting for now is complete the water bath for the thermo aqua tuner and the last few tiles of gold metal tiles. And we should be ready to go on this one. And it's a good thing too, because the duplicates are gasping just about everywhere. Our water bath is done right here. And it looks like we have about eight more tiles until this thing's ready to fire on. Very excited because we're cutting it down to the wire. In the background, we're also retiring this huge water tank. I've decided that we're just going to extend on all of our great halls down through here. And the water required for research will just come right out of this little pitcher pump. It'll be nice and co-located. And the best part about it is it's being supplied by our toilet system. We have a hydro sensor here that as soon as there's more than 500 kilos of water in here, it just shuts this liquid vent. Very easy implementation, and the fact that it's co-located makes it even better. And before we finished, we made sure we added a liquid pipe right here, and that way the clean water prioritizes going to the bathrooms where it's needed, and not down here to the tank. Otherwise, that could have left us with a messy situation. We also put an automatic dispenser here so we can collect all the bleachstone and oxalite, anything we need to put in water, We'll sit right here. We're loading up our coolant loop the same as last time with just a little bit of polluted water and making sure that we have the thermo aqua tuner off. That way we fill it correctly the first time. Somebody forgot to put the steam vent exhaust. We're not going to point fingers here. We're just going to go ahead, open it back up, put in the liquid vent. No big deal. The last little bit is we separated the gas pipe here. That way the hydrogen skips all the way past it and goes right into this tank. We don't want to be messing around with any of those junk gases to start with. And then it might help if I add all the large power transformers, but this is fine because we need to hook in to our temporary power spine, which is being provided by these three coal generators. She's alive. Granted, there's still a lot to do, but at least we're starting to move some machinery around. Dare I say, I believe we are now stabilized. Last thing to do, deconstruct this entire gas reservoir, pop everybody's eardrums, and let the beautiful hydrogen flow. Now all we really need to do is deliver the oxygen and the dupes are almost there. I will admit it's not the prettiest of all designs. Basically, we have this monstrosity here feeding the bottom half of the base and the lower half of the map. The top one is feeding the top half of the map and the top half of the base. It's decent right now, but I'd like to make it a little sexier a little bit later on in the playthrough. For now though, I'm tired of seeing suffocation messages and this will fix all those problems. Namely, because with the addition of this mega spawn, we're gonna be able to go up to 176 duplicates. Small update on our cool steam vent tamer as well. This actually maintained its vacuum before this thing went active. Of course, it's not going to go active for another 22 cycles. So we have a little bit of time to finish it. The long and short of it is there's going to be water sitting in this area all the way up to 200 kilos on this tile when the hydro sensor will pick it up and say, okay, there's enough water in here, start pumping it out. For now, we're just pumping it off into this pool. Eventually, we're going to go into our water silos. Stay tuned the next episode to see those glorious monstrosities. The cooling just comes from one thermo aqua tuner and it just spreads around just enough chill to keep the water level in here cold so that way when this cool steam vent erupts, the steam instantly turns into water and everybody's a happy camper. 
In the background, we also continued on our main power spine and brought it all the way to the other side of the map. In addition to these two hydrogen generators now dumping power directly onto the spine, it's also going to be able to provide that heavy watt wire to come all the way down this side of the map as well, so we can hook up transformers over there. You may have noticed the few episodes that we put in the water sieve carbon skimmer combo here, and it managed to clean up most of the carbon dioxide. Well, now that we're starting to oxygenate the bottom half of the map, it was time to put one down here as well. And already the map is looking much, much better as far as breathability. Our next dupe is a building and farming extraordinaire with an iron gut and an aversion to doing any sort of doctoring errands. Welcome to the colony, dupe number 88. Our next dupe is skilled at researching and supplying. They have a green thumb. They're skilled in critter ranching one. Unfortunately, they occasionally eat glue. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to dupe 89. Our next dupe likes to pick things up and then set them down. They're handy and they have a small bladder. Welcome to dupe 90. I think I can confidently say that we've stabilized here in the mid game. We hover around 200,000 calories. We have plenty of water to be able to provide our electrolyzers. And for the first time in a while, I'm not hearing the constant dings of a dupe suffocating. This is good news. Our next challenge is to break into this beautiful natural gas geyser, install a couple of steel gas pumps, and then be able to pump it to a power station. I would have loved to be able to put the natural gas generators in here, and that way all the excess polluted water just becomes steam, and then we could just pump the excess steam, turn it back into regular water, and move it along to our oxygen supply. Unfortunately, your natural gas generators also produce carbon dioxide. So we have to deal with the polluted water and the carbon dioxide. But in return, we're given 800 watts of power. We also have to keep in mind that we don't want to add all of the heat that's going to be generated from the natural gas generator in an area where there's a bunch of crops because it will stifle them. Not that enough of our crops aren't stifled already. And that's why we're just not going to try to overthink it. Now, in future episodes, we're going to be putting in a nice power brick and industrial sauna sort of setup. But for right now, we're just getting stabilized. So I think we're just going to make this little area a temporary power substation, if you will. The other issue is our happy little dubs aren't going to be able to survive in this little area for much longer. As soon as it starts getting really heated up and all the polluted oxygen and all the carbon dioxide, on top of the fact that it'll be above 70 degrees, this is going to be a no-go zone for our duplicates. And since once again we're playing the let's not do this inside of Atmos suit game, we're just going to go ahead and put tiles all the way around this. And that way we can work on it from the inside without any of this natural gas escaping and we'll be able to put a liquid lock for our dupes to get in and out of temporarily. Now, right now, because this thing is dormant and there's five kilograms of pressure of natural gas in here, the temperature is at 29 degrees. But when it's operating, the temperature is going to go all the way up to 150 degrees. So we're going to have to be careful on that, too. We're just about ready to break into here and have dupes hold their breath while they analyze this natural gas geyser and build our couple of pumps. One more tile here and then we'll be able to get that nice liquid lock. We've also started putting in some basic infrastructure. Here's a water sieve and a carbon skimmer to be able to take care of all the carbon dioxide that the natural gas generators are going to emit. We also have a liquid pump here. The liquid pump's going to take all the polluted water that's in this tank and bring it all the way over here to these two sieves, which then joins up with the rest of the polluted water coming out of here that eventually gets sent to this mega spawn. And the great thing about having a liquid pump here is I can just tie it in right like this to be able to charge the water sieve. We also went ahead and put an auto sweeper in a storage bin to hold the sand. And that way, it's not gonna take any dupe labor to load this thing up with any filtration medium. Look at this, perfect. The vacuum right here, and this is about not to be a vacuum because all this natural gas is gonna escape, but at least it'll stay in this area and we'll be able to pump it out. That way we have a steady supply of natural gas before this thing becomes active again. And the question is, what kind of irritation do the dupes get from sitting in natural gas? Ah, uh, major eye irritation for an athletics hit of minus four. Sorry, dupes. You might want to start running to the cafeteria now. Oh, yeah, and they're also getting popped eardrums because there's four kilos worth of natural gas in here. That's adding an additional plus 20% of stress. No big deal. With our water sieve set up complete, we can just tie just a little bit in there. You don't need very much to get it charged. Just a few drops. I normally go with one run, 
just like this. Leave this path empty and it should be good. Our natural gas geyser is finally complete. We even got nine data banks out of it. Very nice. In the course of doing research, despite the fact that we haven't yet created an orbital data collection lab in space and done that whole research piece, we've managed to knock out a few different techs just using the data banks. Solid management for one, and then jetpack research. That way we can get our large liquid cargo tank. That has more to do with our water silos. But despite that research, we still have 36 units left. I think we're gonna go ahead and grab radiation refinement. You know, so we can get a research reactor. The even better news about the natural gas geyser analysis being complete is we now know it's gonna produce 122 grams of natural gas per second forever. So based on the fact that each natural gas generator only takes 90 grams per second, you might be inclined to only put one or two of these down. Except we have to take into account that the generators aren't gonna be running flat out. If we estimate that these generators are only gonna be running 50% of the time, then it's gonna take three gas generators to use all this natural gas. We add in a gas reservoir, and then we're ready to go ahead and tie everything in. And here's how it looks at the end. We make sure that the exhaust is gonna be outputted right in front of the carbon skimmer, ensuring that we use a high pressure gas vent, that way the whole system doesn't get stopped up. We're using the gas reservoir for natural gas buffer. The last bit is the power setup. We don't want the natural gas generators running when these steam turbines are running. So that means that they are gonna require their own smart battery. So we'll just put one down right there. Tie it in with their automation. Since these natural gas generators produce polluted water, we want these to run as much as possible, so we're going to set this smart battery at, say, 9060 or 9070, allow the steam turbines to turn on, say, 9040, and then our shameful last-ditch just-in-case manual generator array, we'll go ahead and set it on 9020. We went ahead and added another gas reservoir. This is for the future expansion of our kitchen. We are eventually going to want a gas range, so this gas reservoir's purpose is just to hold enough natural gas to be a buffer for the eventual gas range. Couple of more items in the background. We did finish our next great hall. That brings us to a total of four great halls holding 29 tables apiece. And if you look at this, we cleared out enough space for our final great hall. Well, almost. Since these only designed for 29 tables, we're gonna have to kick out one side or the other to add the 30th. And these two gas pumps have nearly vacuumed out all the natural gas present in this chamber. So we're ready to go ahead and seal it up. Then we'll clean up this whole mess and we'll be ready for production. We even went ahead and added a bunch of deodorizers on the bottom here to capitalize on that free clay. And there you have it, our natural gas power substation. I had full intentions of getting a lot more done this episode, but let's be honest, the game is running really slow. We also had to get our second mega spawn up and we may have added one or two more mushrooms as well. We also finished up all of our great halls. This five tier system holds 150 mess tables. Next episode, I plan on doing those water silos, expanding into even more geysers and vents. It's gonna be a great time, just like this episode was. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did, and I'll talk to you soon.